I have the ones right here. So it's the minutes of the December 6th meeting. And the first question was, why does the Hudson School Board deem it necessary for parents to prove a hardship in order to attend a high school other than Manchester? May I ask what the other one is? Yep. Well. Does the Hooksett School Board feel that the current tuition sharing method is in any way illegal because of vouchers or any other reasons? Okay. Uh, I can respond personally to that if that's all right. Well, you, we, we can deliberate oh, on that. Okay. Sure. My, my thought on that is, uh, to me, uh, and I've actually been voting no, as far as I can remember, on uh, any request to uh, anyone uh, to attend a school other than Manchester, uh, Central or West. Because in my mind, uh, regardless of where Hooksett High School is, whether it's on Palmer Road or Hooksett Central, Hooksett West, uh, any money that is sent out of the school of record uh, is diverting funds, and that impacts the majority of the students uh, who go. Uh, similar to that's why they don't allow us to uh, public vouchers, vouchers going, uh, allowing people uh, vouchers to parents to get money to attend private school because if everyone could do that, then those who, could, who would be left behind, there wouldn't be any money left because all that money would be deported. So that's why I've been voting no uh, as long as I can remember. Uh, the contract itself says case by case. Questions have been asked. What is what is our criteria to determine case by case? There really wasn't. It's up to each one of us to determine what we believe case by case is. So when that question was posed, people want to know what, what criteria are using to determine case by case. And I think we were uh, correct in giving some guidelines uh, for us to use uh, to determine whether we vote yes or no. And we uh, created through policy development discussions previously uh, over a couple of months, uh, bits and pieces have come up that uh, it should create some type of request should in indicate a hardship that by going to Central West you would have an impact on my my child's uh, attendance or my niece and nephew who are, who are coming up the pipeline. Uh, which then prompted, what's a hardship? What's the definition of hardship? And I said two meet meetings ago, there really isn't a definition of hardship for us to use as a guideline. So, uh, based on that question, what what's the definition of hardship? We reverted uh, to, which we've always been our uh, thinking, uh, Ed Rule 320. And Ed Rule 320s uh, uh, is actually three points to it. Say it's a substantial portion of the pupil's academic, physical, personal, or social needs cannot be met by the assigned school or are not found within the student body of the assigned school. Two, the assigned school's failure to meet the pupil's needs will impair the educational process of the pupil. And three, another public school, either within the district or in another, may reasonably meet the pupil's education needs. That, I think that gives a guideline to uh, parents requesting that. But still, that's not a definitive. It still will be up to each one of us here, whether we serve this year, last year, or uh, uh, from 2003, when we put this contract in, it's up to us as school board members to determine if we believe uh, that will uh, create that. So, so I think over a period of time, people have been asking what what's the case by case. We said hardship. What's hardship? We refer to that. So, uh, so I think that's where we're where we're looking at. So, to me, uh, we we're not a state voucher system, and, and that's why I've been voting no. Uh, how other bo board members been making their decision, that's up to them individually. Uh, how uh, a board four years ago, when uh, only Dana and I were on the board, how the other three voted, that's up to them. But each request has been addressed case by case. Uh, in the past, uh, the majority has voted yes. This year, uh, a majority uh, have voted no, including myself, and I've been all in the with voting no all these years, so that's my take on this whole process. And remember, I think we have th actually 37 students attending uh, a non-school uh, of Manchester. 
that's what, 8% did you do at the same time? 8%, public school. so. Public school. So we're getting 8, 8, 8, uh, 37 times whatever the calculation is, that's uh, close to $400,000. $400,000 being diverted from Hooks in High School, in other words, Hooks it's generic name, West Essential, impacts us. And that's $400,000 that could be used to address some lingering concerns, such as class sizes. $400,000 can hire a lot of, quite a few teachers that can direct that, so uh, we're, we're adding to the problem. You know? Manchester has not ever contacted me, questioned me, or even posed any questions on what our case is. What our criteria, so uh, that's my point. Of view. Next. Anyone else? I mean, I would just add that in order for the for the district not to be um, to lessen the risk to the district that we're not into a, uh, a school of choice tuition liability scenario. I'm of the opinion that the maintenance agreement with, with Manchester, um, in fact, it makes it a, ma a school maintained by Hookset. Um, so I've referred back to Ed 320 as well as our policies, JCB, as a, an impartial, objective way to to come up with a criteria for for um, for approving um, attendance outside of uh, a school that we're in contract with. Um, yeah, I, I just, with the research that I did, you know, we're not a school choice state, unfortunately, at this point. Um, I don't think that the practice was ever seen that it was going to get this big, and it did, and it needed to be uh, resolved uh, before it got out of hand. And I think God is right. I mean, we were, you know, putting ourselves at risk and liability because we aren't a school choice state. The, the laws were not set up. For, for partial tuition payments to other schools. So it's public education, and you're supposed to go to school in the district which you reside. And that's why, and the only reason why a child goes outside is because of a hardship. And that's why we looked at that hardship statute. I don't think that you can do that. I don't think we can send anybody anywhere else outside of a hardship to answer that particular question. Anyone else? You know, my, my feelings are we, we obviously have a, have a contractual agreement uh, with, with the city of Manchester. And uh, uh, we could all read that agreement and, and interpret interpret it differently. I'm, I'm certain of that, it's especially in specific areas of the contract can be interpreted in a number of different ways. Um, but I also believe that, you know, there's, there's a good faith aspect uh, of, of every contract, and, and I, I certainly believe that uh, the contract that was, uh, that was uh, developed between the City of Manchester and, and the Hooksett School District was for all the, all the students of Hooksett to attend uh, the Manchester high schools, and and as far as case by case, though I you know, completely agree with what Jim stated in, in principle, I interpret case by case uh, differently. I don't think we were really doing it on a case by case basis in, in the past. It was more of a, and I hate to say it because it sounds like we weren't doing our job, but uh, somewhat of a rubber stamp. We would get one, two a year. Uh, and uh, it was, yeah, sure, why not? It's not costing the district any more money, but uh, in, in the past two, three years, the numbers have increased, and I don't have the numbers in front of me. 37, the numbers have increased, and uh, I believe from a, from a good faith uh, contractual aspect that, that the, the district it would put itself in, 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 a, uh, in a potential uh, breach of contract if we continue to allow students without some sound reasoning why they were not attending uh, uh, high school in the city of Manchester. So that is why you know the, the policy policy committee went went and did their their work. 
and uh, you know the defining document that that, that they used, uh, I'll say, uh, you know, behind the scenes for our for our district policies was ED 320 uh, state statute. Uh, you know, in retrospect, should we have referenced ED 320 in, in the policy? Maybe. Uh, uh, we do reference, uh, you know, RSAs uh, uh, very often, and, and uh, again, in retrospect, maybe that should have been should have been done. But I honestly believe that uh, that for a, for us to approve a request for a student to attend uh, a high school other than one of record, uh, there has to be some uniqueness, if you will, to the to the uh, to the reason. And uniqueness being uh, something that that you know it, it's it's not all the students aren't in the same same boat, so to speak. And, and, and I, I use as an example if uh, and, and this is a very this is just a, a, a very high level example. I have a, a student that wants to be a uh, a doctor, and I believe that more doctors come out of Pinkerton than they do out of Central High School, that's not a unique reason for, for my child attending Pinkerton because there are many students that have gone on to be doctors that have gone to school at Central. And, and uh, again, that's probably not the best uh, example in the world, but uh, uh, I, I, I firmly believe that we were, we were at risk. You know, have we been threatened with any sort of action? Absolutely not. Uh, in fact, I've gone on the record as saying that you know uh, that we have not uh, Manchester, to my knowledge, has not has not made any uh, any you know moves uh, based on on the fact that students have gone to other schools. But it's it's apparent that the, the requests are increasing, and uh, again, I firmly believe we needed something in place. I think ED three twenty is a, is a uh, uh, a good guiding document uh, for us to go by. Cheryl? And with that said, I mean, I understand, you know, the concerns of the parents who really wanted to send their children to other schools. And this, to me, may be an opportunity for us to open up discussions about what we may want to do for all of our children and not just the select few. And to me, that's a big part of this as well. How do I make a decision for just a select few students that they're more special to go to better schools, but the rest of our students don't? So I think it's it's best to adhere to what the intent of the law is and to continue that way and to open up communications as to if, if we're really not happy with Manchester and if do we really want to spend more money to send them somewhere else, let's start the, let's start that ball rolling. It's, it seems to me that it's always been something everybody's wanted to do, but we have not done yet. And I think because everybody thought we had this escape clause that a few people could be savvy enough to get their kids into other schools using our district money, that it was okay. But now that that door has closed, I think it's going to set off a catalyst for us to really address what is bothering parents here. Anyone else? Yeah, just a little background, Cheryl. We, last year we we discussed we discussed this, probably not to this extent, at a couple of public forums um, because it was a year that we could have made a decision on the Manchester contract. That there's only certain years we can opt out, um, so so we did, uh, uh, you know, discuss this somewhat last year with the contract. So, but 